Hey, North Hills Church, uh, good morning to you all or whenever you are watching this, whether it be in the afternoon or evening or morning. Um, so for those of you who are unaware at this point, which I'm sure you guys are all aware, um, this is our third week in a row that we are not meeting in person. Um, and the reason for that is because we had a small outbreak of COVID within our church. It hit us personally, our own church family. Um, and so just a quick update on all of that. Uh, there were about 20 of us who uh, tested positive for COVID. Fortunately, it appears that everyone is recovering uh, from the coronavirus. Um, as I speak right now, um, Mandy McCleary is still in the hospital uh, with COVID complications. So our prayers are certainly out for you, Mandy. Um, we love you. Um, and so church, I ask you to remember Mandy in your prayers. And I also ask you to remember everyone else recovering from the coronavirus as well. I mentioned last week that I tested positive for the virus. Um, I want you all to know that I'm pretty much back to normal now. Um, and so I thank you for your prayers as we serve a good, good father who actively listens to each and every one of our prayers. Um, and so I thank you for that. And so next week, uh, we will be back to in-person services like normal. And let me tell you, I look forward to that. I've missed you guys. Um, it's been a long uh, couple of weeks as I've been quarantining myself in uh, the house for quite some time. My quarantine is over. I spent some time out at Lowe's picking up food, and, and I've enjoyed my time out of the house, as I'm sure some of you guys who have been in quarantine now, you're out of that quarantine phase. Uh, you guys know uh, the feeling, the, the good feeling there, something we can be thankful for. Um, as next week will be in person. But before that, on Thursday, we are going to celebrate Thanksgiving. We, we all come together as a nation. And we celebrate uh, the holiday of Thanksgiving. Um, now, let me tell you, Thanksgiving 2019, that feels like a long, long time ago. A lot has happened since then. Um, and we don't necessarily need to talk about everything that's happened in this chaotic year of 2020 because at this point, uh, we are all very well familiar with all that has transpired and all the difficulties that people um, have gone through in the year 2020 and all the difficulties that people are currently going through in the year 2020. But in summary, a lot of people in this nation and a lot of people in this world are enduring a lot of of difficulties. So my question then is how in the world in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all the hardship and the difficulties and the loss and the sorrow and the pain and so forth, how in the world are we supposed to celebrate Thanksgiving in the midst of all this? How are we supposed to have a grateful and, and thankful heart and attitude? As I was uh, preparing uh, the short little message, uh, I was reminded that last year uh, I kind of had a similar theme uh, leading up to the week in Thanksgiving as Jamie, Ezra, and I, we just got done spending 19 days in the hospital with Ezra. And so today, excuse me, oh, I thought I had a sneeze, but I don't. Uh, isn't that the worst? Um, but today, uh, we, we kind of have that similar theme as uh, we're, we're trying to celebrate Thanksgiving in the midst of hardship. And so how are we supposed to do that? Now, Habakkuk, when, when we turn to the Bible, Habakkuk, he was faced with a similar dilemma that we experience today being thankful in the midst of hardship. Now, a lot of you may not be super familiar with Habakkuk as it is a, a very small book, only three chapters. Um, it's one of the, he's one of the 12 minor prophets. Uh, too many people just aren't uh, very well familiar with the minor prophets. So Habakkuk, he was a prophet when the nation of Judah was nearing its end. Uh, the nation of Judah, near the end of the, the timeline there before they were conquered, they were falling away from God. And, and the people were continually committing sin after sin after sin against God. 
And so Habakkuk, being a prophet, a prophet for God, doing God's work here on earth, he, he looks around uh, amongst all uh, of the people that he is surrounded by, and he sees all of this corruption, he sees all of the wickedness and rebellion and sin, and he then turns to God and he complains to God. This is quoted from the book. He says, God, why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when wicked swallow up the man more righteous than he? And so Habakkuk, he sees all this corruption. He, he then uh, complains to God uh, about the, these issues, the sin in this world. And, and he goes on a bit of a rant here, as you can see at the beginning of Habakkuk. And so God responds. God responds, responds to Habakkuk. And he says that he is going to send the nation of Babylon to invade Judah. Now, Habakkuk was complaining to God, but I'm not sure uh, this is really the response that Habakkuk would have wanted for God to send an invasion to uh, the, the place that he was living in. And so here's Habakkuk. Habakkuk, he's dealing with the group of people who are rebellious and full of sin. He then complains to God about this, and then God says that he's going to send Babylon to invade Judah. To say at the very least that things are not going in Habakkuk's favor. Dare I say uh, more so than what we are experiencing in 2020. He, he is truly going through a lot of difficulties here. So how does Habakkuk respond? How does he respond to all these hardships and the difficulties that he faced thousands of years ago? Well, fortunately, uh, we have access to his response to all these hardships and how he responded to this mess. And we can read his response at the end of the book, Habakkuk chapter 3, if you have your Bible, chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And Habakkuk writes, and he says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. And so in the midst of all the hardship and the difficulties that Habakkuk uh, was enduring this time, he says in verse 10, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. So what was Habakkuk's response? His response to all this hardship was that he would rejoice in God. He would rejoice in the God of his salvation as God is his strength. Now, this is a simple but extremely profound lesson that we can learn from Habakkuk here. We can learn that no matter what is going on in this world, no matter what is going on in your life, you can and you should and you must rejoice in God. For God is good, for God is good and we serve a good, good Father. And our good, good Father blesses us in so many different ways, most of which go unnoticed on a daily basis. And so in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the difficulties that we are experiencing in this bizarre year 2020, I would encourage you all to rejoice in the Lord and count your many blessings that our good, good Father blesses us with. As we can truly celebrate Thanksgiving this Thursday with a grateful heart, with a grateful attitude, as we can rejoice in God. This is an attitude that we should have, not just around Thanksgiving time, but this is an attitude that we should have year-round. Thanksgiving is a good time for us to remind ourselves to be grateful, to be appreciative, as we serve a good, good Father. And we can always, 24-7, we can always rejoice in the Lord our God, no, and no matter what is going on in this world, no matter what is going on in our lives, we can rejoice in the Lord because God is good, he's faithful, he blesses us in so many different ways. 
And so for today, kind of a healthy exercise that I would like us all to partake in. Um, in the comments below, um, I would like you all to post something that you are thankful to God for in the midst of this crazy, bizarre year. And, and, and we can start um, spreading the, this grateful attitude, the, the, this grateful thought process with one another. And I truly think that it is contagious. So please comment something below and, and which you are thankful for, e even if you may be going through a difficult time in your life right now, as a lot of people are. And, and in the midst of these difficulties, we can still rejoice in God and focus on the many ways in which he blesses us with. And so I'm going to start uh, for you all. Uh, I know in, in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of all the difficulties uh, that I've experienced in the year 2020, uh, I, I'm thankful for my own little family uh, that I have here in Ohio as we are establishing a family here with Jamie, Ezra, and I. I'm also thankful for my parents and my parents raising me in a good, solid Christian home and family. And man, I, I cannot be grateful enough for that. Um, on a lighter side of things, I'm thankful for Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. You guys know me, you, you who know me pretty well probably know that I love Chick-fil-A and I'm grateful to God for Chick-fil-A for, for that is God's food here on earth. Now, I'm a little salty that there's none closer, but yet I'm still thankful for Chick-fil-A and the few times that I do get to enjoy Chick-fil-A. I'm thankful for the privilege uh, that I have and the honor that I have of God using me to lead his church, for God trusting me to do that. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the church family that we have here in Ohio, as it's no fun being away from our families, but, but we are so blessed to have our church family here in Ohio. So that's another thing I'm thankful for in the midst of this chaos. I'm thankful for, I'm grateful for in, in the midst of COVID hitting us personally as a church. I'm thankful that even though we aren't able to gather together, I'm thankful that we are able to send out a video to you all so that we can all continue to grow closer to God and expand his kingdom, our vision as a church. Even though a handful of us got COVID, I'm thankful that it wasn't any more of you guys. I'm thankful for the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, the homes that we live in, and our church building. And in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this hardship, I'm thankful for all of you, and I'm thankful that we all serve a good, good Father. And I could go on and on of the many ways in which God has blessed me as, as we can always rejoice in God. And so today, I'd just like to encourage you all to learn from this brilliant example of Habakkuk and learn to rejoice in God at all times. At all times, we can rejoice in God and we can count our many blessings, the blessings that go unnoticed all the time. And so focus on the many ways in which God blesses you. And so I'd encourage you to spread, help uh, others spread this grateful attitude with one another and comment below something that you are thankful for in the midst of this chaos. I thank you all for listening. I hope that you all have a fabulous Thanksgiving and I thoroughly look forward to gathering with you all in person next Sunday. Take care.